I'm here with Paul Metz. And he was one of the test pilots for the YF-23 behind us. Can you tell us a little bit about the YF-23? Well, Betty, the, uh, the YF-23 is uh, one of four airplanes that were designed to become the advanced tactical fighter, the next step beyond the generation of the F-15 and F-16. And they were uniquely designed to enter into enemy airspace where surface-to-air missiles and radar-directed threats could down our airplanes. And in fact, at the time that this airplane was built, uh, none of our aircraft could survive in an environment even like Vietnam because of the surface-to-air missiles. So these airplanes are what we call stealthy in design. Uh, they're able to go extremely fast without using afterburner, which in and of itself reduces the vulnerability of somebody trying to chase you with a missile. The missile can't get to you, you're moving so fast. And the third piece of it is some advanced avionics that allow this airplane to remain invisible yet reach out and find the enemy and the enemy never knows that you're there. Uh, it is as maneuverable uh, as, in fact, it's more maneuverable than existing fighters and uh, this is one of two YF-23s. You've flown quite a few flighters, fighters. What was it like to fly this compared to others? And could you talk about some of the others? Yeah, I've flown uh, a great variety of fighters, ranging from uh, the F-86 Sabre jet out of Korea uh, through the Century Series of airplanes. I flew the F-105 Thunder Chief in combat, um, and I've flown the F-15 and the F-16 and the F-18. Um, so in comparison to those airplanes, it is truly a generation beyond them in terms of those things I just spoke of, the stealth, the special avionics, the ability to go very fast without using the afterburn, those are things that those airplanes can't even come close to. So they are, they are revolutionary in their design. Now there are only two of these uh, built. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, uh, it was a competition. Uh, the Air Force was not sure exactly what they wanted, so this time they allowed the contractors to put together an airplane they thought would do this job of surviving in a hostile environment. And so uh, Northrop and McDonnell Douglas built this YF-23 to meet that requirement. And of course the Lockheed Boeing General Dynamics team built their version, the YF-22, to meet that problem. Um, it was about a four-year effort to do it. And like I said, only two airplanes. So it's rather unique and it is not a production airplane. In fact, a lot of people don't know this, but the parts of this airplane come from everything from the space shuttle to helicopters. Uh, and they do that to reduce the cost for a prototype. Uh, the exterior is unique, but the guts of it, the pieces of it, are quite adapted from other airplanes. Well, talking about the features, can you give us an up-close, personal walk-around? Oh, I'd love to show you it. Yes, let's take a look. Well, one of the things that's different about the YF-23, different from other airplanes that you'll see, is um, right up here on the nose. Uh, this is the area where we gather the data, the sense data about the altitude and the airspeed and the Mach number as the airplane flies through the air. And we do that with sensors that are mounted on this nose. And part of the design, the stealthy design of this airplane, was to get rid of those external devices. You, you can actually see some of them back here on the back uh, side of the airplane with the red tags on it. Those were there just for test purposes. But the actual sensing would occur on the skin of the airplane. And right here at the very tip of the radome is one of those sensors. It has a plug over it right now, but that was where we sensed the total pressure, the air rushing towards the airplane and gave us the uh, main ingredient of airspeed. But the sense pressure for altitude is right in the skin of this airplane. There are actual small holes back here that allow us to read air pressure. Quite unusual, but quite required for a stealthy airplane. Let me show you an example of what I mean by these air, air data sensors used for a stealthy airplane. This is a very typical pressure probe that you find on F-15s, F-16s, and F-18s, very common. You can see that it sticks out from the skin. It's here only as a test device for us to measure the air data and compare it to what is really used on the airplane to sense air pressure. And that's right up here in these small holes. If you notice, there are four 
triangular shape uh, or triangularly positioned diamond position holes in the skin of the airplane. That's how the sensor uh, picks up air pressure for altitude and uh, other uh, characteristics of the airplane's flight path. And as you can see, they're, they're flush with the skin so they don't create a radar signature, whereas these others, the production uh, type of devices I just showed you, are very unstealthy in their characteristics. So these are mounted at various places on the airplane in a very unconventional way to give us a stealthy air data system. Well, we're uh, right beside the nose gear of the airplane, and uh, this little piece that I've got my hand on is, has an interesting story behind it. You'll notice that it's painted orange, uh, unlike any other part of the airplane you'll see. Uh, this is probably a testament to the ingenuity of engineers in a crisis. Uh, we had some problems with this nose gear, which comes from an F-15, by the way, uh, on the very first uh, high-speed taxi. And the nose wheel started shimming like a, a grocery cart uh, wheel shimmies. And uh, we had to find a fix for it. And the uh, engineers came up with this little orange device here, which effectively changes where the axle of the wheel is relative to the strut. And that stopped the uh, shimmy. And they did that in a period of less than a week. Uh, and uh, it worked superbly. The uh, nose gear of the airplane folds forward up and into the wheel well here. Uh, interestingly enough, the pilot's seat is right on the strut, or right above this strut right here, so you can feel every crack and bump on the runway and taxiway as you, as you move the airplane. Um, but it all operates hydraulically and comes up very quickly. The um, orange device that you see on the nose gear is a, uh, a balance weight that was added after we had problems on the very first high-speed taxi run on the airplane. The engineers uh, did a, a genius effort of creating that in less than a week, and it stopped the problem that we had. Uh, that's why it's painted orange. It wasn't part of the original part of the airplane. The uh, strut is and the wheel are from an F-15, and the strut assembly folds forward and up into the wheel well. Uh, it takes about four seconds to uh, come up, and it's hydraulically actuated. You notice the name Spider on the uh, door there. That was the nickname we gave the number two airplane. Gray Ghost was the number one airplane. I mentioned uh, the stealthiness of the airplane. And stealthy means uh, attempting to make an airplane invisible to radar and uh, thermal energy seeking devices. So there are many features that are unique. We talked about the air data system being one of those things that helps make it stealthy. But also the weapons are stealthy. You see here the forward end of the weapons bay doors and all the weapons, the missiles, air-to-air -air missiles, are carried inside this large bay that extends back about uh, 12 feet behind me. Uh, the reason they're carried inside, again, is because a missile itself is a very radar reflective target. You don't want to carry those on the wings or the airplane will not be invisible. So they're carried here. The doors open in flight quickly. The missiles extended and shot and the doors close back up again so the airplane remains stealthy. Well, I was talking about uh, the airplane as a prototype being composed of the parts from many different airplanes and the space shuttle and helicopters. That's to keep the cost down. Here's another good example of that. This is the wheel and the strut, main gear strut assembly from an F-18 Hornet. Uh, it worked quite well for the prototypes. Um, the only thing that was not uh, particularly favorable was that the F-18 weighs about 50% less than a YF-23, so the wheels could not stand the tremendous heat energy of applying the brakes at high speed. So we were always faced with uh, uh, having to put the brakes on when we slowed the airplane down to about 80 knots. The um, main gear, unlike the nose gear, folds backwards up into the wheel well that you see here. Um, again, it's hydraulically actuated, just like the nose gear, and uh, snaps up in place. It also has uh, a, a landing gear designed for aircraft carrier landing, so it's very rugged. Now, this rather innocuous looking door uh, it has an interesting story behind it. It opens mechanically when you're at low speeds and lets air come into the engine compartment to cool the engine bays. But one day one of our crew chiefs uh, struck his head on this sharp point on the front and opened up a pretty good gash. So we decided to make it safer by painting it red. So this whole panel became red. Uh, 
with a big red triangle on it outlined in white. And to further accentuate it, we made another triangle pointing at it outlined in white. And much to our surprise, it looked like the hourglass of a black widow spider. And uh, you'll see a few pictures, including a cover story on Aviation Week with the hourglass on it. The people uh, in power decided that that was not appropriate, so it was eventually overpainted. But for a while, this looked like a black widow spider. There are two distinguishing features that, that make the YF-23 such a unique airplane. One of them are these very large V-tails on each side of the uh, aft end of the airplane. They are almost one-fourth the size of the wing of the airplane. They have tremendous power to pitch the airplane and to fly at very slow speeds. Uh, they're, they are like the rest of the airplane made of composite materials. Very distinctive, very unique. In addition, you'll see here the exhaust deck of the airplane. In this airplane, there was no thrust vectoring, but these decks allowed the heat from the engines to come across and out and actually reduce the thermal signature. Now, stealth is more than just radar invisibility. It's also being able to be invisible to heat sensors. And that's what these decks did. So the combination of the stealthy materials, the decks of the engines made this an extremely small signature airplane. One of the things that distinguishes this airplane is what's called an edge-aligned planform. That is, every piece of this airplane has edges or angles that match up with other edges or angles. For example, if you look at these tails, you can see there's multiple angles. There's this angle sweeping down and going back. If you look at the leading edge, there's another set of angles. If you look closely at the airplane, particularly from an overhead shot, you'll see that those angles are repeated on other parts of the structure, on the tails, on the wings. And it is that combination of angles collected together in a common set that makes the radar signature extremely small. Well, this is the uh, cockpit area up here, and uh, it actually isn't the, the real cockpit. It's uh, uh, been painted over. But it used a special uh, combination windscreen and canopy made out of glass for an outer shell and polycarbonate, which is plastic, a type of plastic, for the inner shell. Uh, it made it uh, able to carry some special coatings that added to the stealthiness of the airplane. Um, but it gave the pilot tremendous visibility, as you can imagine, through all that glass, particularly uh, forward and aft. Uh, you had uh, an unusual amount of, of uh, uh, visibility available to you as a pilot. Well, the engines of the YF-23 are at the heart and soul of this machine. Um, one of the features of the airplane is what is called super cruise. That's the ability to go supersonic speeds without using the afterburner, which is a gas guzzling part of a normal engine. And these engines, which were YF-120s from General Electric, gave us a tremendous thrust in what's called military power just before you get into afterburner and allow us to get those great speeds out of the airplane. You can see the intake duct here and even it is very unusual. It is not a straight shot back to the engine. In fact, the duct makes two turns, one to the left and one up to the engines. If you had the engines in here and looked in through this uh, inlet, you could not see the engines. They are blocked visually because of those turns in the duct. And they are there to once again make the airplane invisible. They're part of a stealth technology. Well, from this angle, you can get a good idea of what we've called the edge line plan form. If you look carefully at the angle of, say, the wing, the leading edge of the wing, you'll find it mimicked in other portions of the airplane, like on the V tails. You'll also see uh, the V tail angles mimicked. Uh, as the same as the, the trailing edge of the wing and the leading edge of the wing. You'll even find that the intakes have an angular relationship to these lines that you see. And it is, it's the coalescing of the radar reflection from each of these different angles that gives the airplane such an extremely good stealth signature. You'll also notice that uh, you can see the canopy well here, and if you imagine looking back at 6 o'clock, you actually have a very wide open area between those V tails to see behind you. It almost felt like you were sitting on top of an airplane rather than inside an airplane. You'll also see the two large humps over the engines. We used to call those the bread loaves. 
They're actually a bit bigger than they should be because originally the Air Force wanted to make thrust reversing as part of the airplane design. They subsequently decided that was not worth the wait, and we never had time to resize the bread loaves to make them smaller, but they would have been smaller and they would have been less draggy on the production airplane. Well, from this angle, you get a very good idea of the exhaust nozzles and those V-tails again. Looking at the exhaust nozzles, you'll see that there appear to be some uh, square-type tiles back there. These are not space shuttle tiles. These are what are called air-transpired cooling tiles. They actually pump uh, air from the compressor of the engine back through minute little holes, thousands of holes in each one of those tiles, and that acts to cool the metal so that the hot uh, gases from the afterburner don't destroy the aft end of the airplane. Again, the reason those tunnels or troughs are there is to provide a shield from the infrared signature, from the heat signature of the airplane. In addition, the V-tails also block that heat signature from the sides. So the airplane is uh, a stealthy airplane both in terms of the radar signature and it's stealthy in terms of the thermal or infrared signature because of these design features. Thank you, Paul, for giving us a walk around of the YF-23. It's an awesome plane. Well, I enjoyed doing it, Betty, and uh, I hope your viewers enjoy it too.